Take a look at this asshole, waking up at quarter to one in the morning just to watch a football game live. He even has the fucking tattoo. While he could wake up at eight and watch the game on demand like a rational individual would, there is nothing rational about what this guy is doing and how much he loves a continually floundering, perennially sucky football team. Every year he thinks his team is going to be good. This year is the year, man. And every year they lose, often in the most heartbreaking of ways possible. Could be a factor. Right now, 46 degrees in Orchard Park, New York. Wind at 8 miles per hour, but expected to increase throughout the afternoon. And yes, it's been raining all morning. For 17 years in a row, the Buffalo Bills have missed the playoffs. But he remembers a day long ago when he was but a child when his hometown team really was good. Now, officially celebrating the AFC East Championship here in Buffalo. For the Bills, it is a club record 13th victory. Out and look at this scene here at Rich Stadium. Now, see, they brought the horses in so they keep the fans off the field. And it really has done the job. These fans are going to beat up the horses. But at this point, these memories are hazy with nostalgia and seem so far away that he is starting to question how real they ever were. But while logic and rationale of course tell him otherwise, he continues to have faith that when the final curtain closes, the protagonist will have defied the odds and won. Chicken soup. Chicken soup. Maybe broccoli. Go through this all again. Tell me what this is. So I think this is all the, the pictures of their history through the years of being like every every building for so many years. And you see, see these eight these faces where okay. like all their hair is brown. Now it's all gray. So and this guy here, yeah, this this guy, you know, is the guy over there that's he now paints either side of his head. His mohawk is thinning, and he now collects cans. Like I just, I just wonder what his story is. You know? Yeah. But this isn't really about wins and losses. There is something more at play here. Hey, oh, hey, baby. These people are from Buffalo, Rochester, Southern Ontario. They are from places that nobody has ever heard of before, like Lockport, Brockport, Middleport, Medina, Albion, and an assortment of other dumpy canal towns. Places that have seen their factories shut down, mass layoffs, and varying degrees of economic liquidation. When I was a kid, my dad lost his job along with almost everybody else, and there was talk that we too would join the exodus of economic refugees moving south to places like North Carolina and Florida, and other pockets of the country where blue collar rust belters were fleeing to. But we were either lucky or dumb enough to have stayed behind. In western New York, we don't have soaring skyscrapers, we don't have big city lights, we don't have nice beaches. Outsiders may come and call our cities and towns shitholes to our faces, as though it's not an insult, but something obvious. But to us, we live in the best place on the planet. This isn't really a story of football, it's a story of identity, of people seeing themselves and their struggles manifested through sport. When we look at this team, we don't see a gaggle of millionaires from elsewhere growing ever richer playing a kid's game. But we see little pieces of ourselves, the perennial underdogs, the laudable losers who try so hard and come so close just to blow it in the end. This is our story, that of our fathers, that of our Uncle Dave's Joe Blow and the guy down at the radiator shop. What happens on the field is often painful to watch, but it unfortunately is something that we can relate to in our own lives. 
You can't let it That's go. That's a touchdown. Yeah. What are the Bills doing? There's a hole that this team has over the people of Western New York that makes it worth it to get buried in the snow, to wake up at 1 a.m. That makes national news anchors who grew up there to break script on air. Let's go Buffalo. That is the CBS TV News tonight. I'm Jeff Moore. Good night. When week 17 of the NFL season rolls around, my interest in the sport is usually firmly extinguished. The Bills are usually out of the playoffs, and I really have no interest watching the Patriots win again. But this year something different happened. It was fourth down and 12, and the Bengals had 49 yards to go, their last chance to score in a game that meant nothing to them, but would send the Bills to the playoffs if they won. All of us Bills fans sat and watched apprehensively. Deep down somewhere, we knew what was going to happen. An incomplete pass, an interception, a sack. Something that would mean that the Bengals would lose and the Bills wouldn't go to the playoffs for an 18th consecutive season. But this didn't happen. Ravens trying to end it here. Fourth down. Dalton steps up. Dalton throws. It's complete. Caught by Boyd. Tyler Boyd. Touchdown. I couldn't believe it. When the Bengals crossed the goal line, it seemed as if space and time hit a glitch. As though the big men pulling the strings fell asleep at the switch. As though someone started reading from the wrong script. It happened. The Buffalo Bills would be going to the playoffs. We're going to the playoffs. We're going to the playoffs! <laughs> We're going to the playoffs! <laughs> I nearly started to cry, felt dumb, and then read about all the other grown men around Western New York who actually did cry tears of joy. I once asked a friend why we care so much about this football team. It all seems so fucking stupid to spend all this money, time, energy, and travel just to watch some guys run around on a field. But he just looked at me and answered simply, this is who we are. This is who we are. That's nasty. Yeah, I got, I got it. If it's Sunday, it's meet the press and oh yes, go Bills.